Sarah and I'm going to show you how to set up your very own CBL loft bed. Here are some tools needed for setup. Hammer and adjustable wrench. If you don't have an adjustable wrench, you can always use a pair of pliers. The next piece you need is a cordless drill. It's really important that you use a cordless drill because the bit stops immediately. If you use an electric drill, it tends to keep going and you can strip the screw into the wood. There are also some other tools that makes life easier when you're setting up your loft bed. And that is a level and a square. Once you've got your tools, you're ready to get started. Remember, all the parts come pre-cut and pre-drilled. If you aren't sure how something fits together, you can always go back to the picture in the instructions to see how everything fits. It's really quite simple. Start by laying the legs notch side up. With the glue provided, place a little bead of glue inside the notch and spread it evenly on all three sides. Next, insert the rug into the notch. Put your knee on the rug to hold it tight against the leg. A trick my dad taught me is to rub a little soap on the screw. It acts like a lubricant and it makes them driving it into the wood even easier. Go ahead and screw it in and make sure that they're nice and tight. Repeat this process on all eight rungs and then you're ready to move on. Right. The next step is to place the carriage bolts in the pre-drill holes and use your hammer to get them into place. Then take the front rail and place it on the carriage bolts. Remember at this point you don't want to use your wrench for the carriage bolts. You want to hand tighten them yourself. Okay, now we're ready to level our loft to make sure it's square. If you have a square or level, you can use it by leveling out the leg and the front rail. Or take your square and check for the right angle. If you don't have either one of those, a piece of paper will do. Or, as your 10th grade geometry teacher told you, Pythagorean's theorem, or more commonly known as a 3-4-5 right triangle. Simply measure out 3 feet down the front rail, 4 feet down the leg, and the two points should give you 5 feet. If it doesn't, you can adjust the leg in or out to make sure that your level is square. Do the same for the back rail. Now we're ready to install the slats. Here's a picture of what they're going to look like when they're complete. Place the slats in the loft between the front and back railings, spacing them about three inches apart. A good trick is to use two two by fours in between to get your three inch spacing. Place it up against the first slat, bring up your second slat, and repeat the process until all the slats are up. Once you're done with that, go ahead and screw them into the front and back railing and you're all set. Once you've placed all your slats, use the front and back railing to secure it into place with these four screws. Once you've completed that on all four sides, use your adjustable wrench to tighten each carriage bolt. Go ahead and place your mattress on top of the slats. Remember also that you must use your safety rail. Place it two to three inches above the side of the mattress. Now that you have seen how easy it is to put together your loft bed, you can customize your loft bed with extra options or just give it that special paint job and you have a one-of-a-kind piece. A splash of paint and a dash of creativity and it makes you feel like home. Plus, with all of the extra space, everyone will be flocking to your room to hang out. We also have a high-rise bed. You may recognize it as a low loft. This is great for people who need a little more storage space but aren't comfortable sleeping five feet off the ground. Parents, is your child ready for a bedroom makeover? Our youth loft bed is designed for younger children and has double safety rails on all four sides. So there you have it. Bed loss so simple that even I can do it. Thanks for watching and be sure to visit collegebedloss.com to order your loft bed today.